Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Well, it gives me um, great pleasure to announce a very, very special video. Because this is the one that we've been waiting for. for well, I'd say we've been closing in this one for a good 20 volumes now. The big 100, the big century 100. Now that's what I call music, 100. And it feels like it's been ages getting to this point. I've, I've seen this series like climbing a mountain almost. Started off with the foothills, made good, good gentle progress. And it gets steeper and steeper as we uh, climb up towards the summit. And these last, uh, I suppose these last 20 from 80 up to 100. This has been like the real uh, rock face at the top, scrambling up. And we finally made it. We finally made it to the plateau. Not quite the summit yet. There's still another five to go. But I think it's time just to take a bit of a pause to uh, have a look around and survey the views and look, look how far we've come. It's not just me saying that. As you'll find out, it's the now people themselves saying that with this volume. Perfectly understandably. Uh, they give themselves a bit of a pat on the back. And I think uh, all credit to them. Now, when I said that uh, from 80 up to 100, it's been a bit of a struggle up the rock face. I guess, I guess there's started to be a few more substandard than good ones. All in all, there's still been a few good ones. Uh, but there's been a few more uh, that I've struggled with. And you do ask yourself all sorts of questions. Is it me getting older? Just moving further and further away from pop music? I don't think so because on every single now there's a uh, there's at least one song I like, so it shows that the potential is there. Moving it wider than Kiss My Good Self. What do we as a society think? Well, I think this now now 100. I think it proves something. Uh, it could just be because it is now 100, but it could be something wider. The fact is that there's only one volume of new songs on this that now. Uh, one CD, if you like, or one half. 23 of the songs are new. And then the rest are drawn from previous now. So they're songs that I've already looked at. Which means that I've got significantly fewer songs uh, to really go into town on. What does that tell us then? Does it tell us that there's less good pop music around? Is this uh, an acknowledgement from the now people? That they can't, uh, can't really fill an album with uh, two CDs of good stuff? Well, let's go on uh, after this one to go back to that, more or less, with a few old songs thrown in at the end. So, I don't think it says that. What I think it does say is that uh, the old songs are just as uh, marketable as the new songs. Uh, if they thought they were going to lose money by only having one CD of new material, uh, they clearly didn't. <laughs> they clearly thought it was commercially viable to put loads of songs from old nows on this one. Uh, who are these nows aimed at? I've asked myself that question. Are they just aimed at kids or younger people? Are they aimed at older people? Because this particular now uh, features songs from, uh, well, yeah, from 1983 onwards, really. Uh, so it does think it's aimed across the board at pretty much everyone. Now, I've been yakking and yakking because it is such a special volume. Uh, and I've not even really got to the first song yet, even though I've played it. It was a good opener, actually. It was Calvin and um, Dua Lipa. Calvin Harris has been a mainstay of these for a good, uh, for a good 10 years now. Uh, I'm trying to think when he first came in, about 2007. This one's from 2018. So, yeah, a good 11 years. Uh, Dua Lipa I've not really liked, and true to form, her vocals weren't brilliant on that. They weren't too bad. The song itself was pretty good. Uh, Calvin's uh, production was good. So, pretty good opener. Uh, here's George Ezra and Shotgun with his usual distinctive old man's voice. <laughs> Slightly different sound for him. Uh, pretty good. Certainly a proper song. He knows how to write songs with good melodies and lyrics and stuff. I kind of like that wobbly bass sound. As we crack on then, we'll follow this one with uh, Clean Bandit, 
Demi Lovato, whose voice is above average, I think. I do really like her voice. Ironically, for a collab, it's called Solo. Uh, it's actually really good. Uh, the music's very, very good. Uh, the vocals are good, but it does have this weird sort of bit where she goes like quack, 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 <laughs> like uh, doing his farmyard animals. It's a kind of vocal effect. A uh, bit superfluous. Didn't really need it. Uh, it doesn't really ruin it either. So fair play. Okay, now, here's a bit of genuine uh, cultural, even political history, socio-political history, shall we say. Uh, Ariana Grande, no tears left to cry, as we've discussed, a uh, victim of an awful, awful uh, terrorist attack. Well, she wasn't a victim herself, but it happened at her concert, so in that sense she was a victim. Uh, what on earth must that have done uh, for her emotionally? Well, one thing you can say about No Tears Left to Cry is it's genuinely soulful, it's genuinely emotional. Uh, none of us who have not been in something like that can ever know what it's like. So the fact that she's uh, uh, turned it into music, no, not blatantly, it's not about the bombings as such, but it's definitely uh, used that as a springboard. She said it herself. Uh, you know, she had to acknowledge it one way or another, uh, had to be dealt with. Uh, and fair play to her for that. She's teamed up with Max Martin, uh, the guy who was responsible for loads of Britney's biggest songs and plenty more. Um, I think I'll stick it on actually because it is so important. Uh, you know, whenever you think of Ariana Grande, whenever you think of a song, it is, it, it, it's an event. What happened was an event of national and international importance. Uh, and uh, you know has to be acknowledged as such uh, and I think yeah the song does that really it's a bit subdued as you'd expect uh, it had a lot of goodwill a lot of people really supported it uh, so although you know from a purely robotically critical point of view you could say it's it's not like the greatest song in the world uh, there is something very haunting about it and uh, yeah it's, uh, it's not really something you want to sort of pull to pieces critically. It is what it is. No tears left to cry. Now, 2002, that was a good year, wasn't it? Which do you prefer, 2002 or 2020, 2020? Uh, Anne-Marie maybe isn't the best candidate to, uh, to uh, do something really appealing because uh, I've really not liked a lot of her stuff. This was not too bad. Uh, I get the point she's making and kind of musically it almost sounds a bit 2002 uh, which would have been about now 53 the summer of 2002 I reckon it was when the resurrection was song of the album because that was when I went to Texas about that time <laughs> I'll be there Jess Glynn uh, she's been really good all in all she, she's not I've not liked everything she's done but she's done more good than bad and I'll be there's pretty good uh, she's definitely got a good set of pipes on her uh, she's not too irritating it's a nice song and it's well sung it's unpretentious a uh, bit repetitive maybe should I say I'll be there over and over but reassuring ok contender for one of the most gay songs for years and years and I don't say that as an insult just as a description it is what it is it's uber camp if you're over me by years and years uh, it's not all that really it's a bit clinky clonky uh, now Flames sees Old Flames, musically speaking, David Guetta and Sia reunited. They had another highlight of uh, Now with Titanium. Uh, this one's not quite as good. She's always borderline irritating, but not quite. It's quite slow, actually. It's kind of a bit like an 80s rock ballad uh, with a kind of slightly more electronic, uh, modern, contemporary sheen. Uh, it's okay actually yeah now Post Malone better now really is uh, I really really hated Rockstar like, I found it really offensive almost uh, but the last one Psycho I thought was a significant improvement and Better Now is his actual best yet it's actually a Post Malone song I'll sit and listen to uh, so you know trying to be open minded take it on a song by song basis uh, what makes it better it's actually got some nice chords good production uh, it's more singing as opposed to rapping 
Uh, and the vocals have definitely have some emotion to them. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, credit. Credit where credit's due. Okay, Jonas Blue. I've not liked some of his or their stuff, whatever it is, featuring Jack and Jack. Rise. Uh, I like the kind of glitching effects, and it's got a nice warpy synth. It is at heart an incredibly generic song. Uh, so, meh. Liam Payne, a uh, former One Direction guy, and Jay Balvin. Again, Liam Payne's done stuff that wasn't all that in the past. Balvin's quite good. Uh, and this one moves this more into the kind of reggae territory. Uh, not bad, actually. Familiar. Answer Phone is next by, let me get this right, Banks and Ranks and Ella Iyer, uh featuring... How do you pronounce that? Young Bane, YXing Bane, Answer Phone. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, may I really? <laughs> I think I won't bother leaving a message. I'll just hang up. It's not too bad. Her vocals are a bit irritating in it. It's another one that's in that kind of post reggaeton style. Where does dance all become reggaeton? Uh, there's a question. Here's another one that straddles that uh, divide. M.O times Lotto Boys and Mr. Easy, bad vibe. Uh, has it got a bad vibe? No, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, it's all right, really. Again, it's nothing like really, really special as such, uh, but it's okay. Now, Tiesto, um, who's, uh, when he used to be really trancey, I used to love him, stuff like Adagio for strings and all that. Then he went very commercial with things like red lights, and I really didn't like that. Uh, now he's here with Zico, featuring Prim, and again, Post Malone. So there's a real combination of people. Jackie Chan. Uh, it takes a bit of time to get going, uh, and in fact, the start's not too bad. It's quite sparse. Uh, the vocals aren't great. But sure enough, uh, Tiesto's a real bandwagon jumper at this point. Why not stick some really annoying vocal chipmunk noises on it? And that kind of ruins it. Uh, so, yeah. M22 featuring Medina and First Time. Uh, it's alright. It's a bit average. You can give it 7 out of 10. It's quite healthy. Uh, it's not too bad. Five Seconds of Summer. They've also done some really bad stuff in the past. Some all right stuff. Young Blood's not too bad. Uh, it's got a kind of glammy build, which uh, a glammy beat, which gradually builds. Say that again. Yeah, it kind of slowly builds up to this big glam beat. Uh, the melody's not all that, uh, but the beat and the kind of uh, dynamics are okay. So that one's all right. Meant to be. BB Rexer featuring Florida Georgia Line. Uh, it's a duet. A boy girl duet. Boy's not all that. Florida Georgia line, I'm assuming. Uh, she's pretty good. I do like her voice. Uh, and so it's not too bad. She definitely pulls it up. Uh, Zed follows. Zed's dead, baby. No, he's not. Not this one. Featuring Marin Morris and Gray, the middle. And it is a bit middling, really. It's reasonably well sung, but it's pretty unmemorable. Uh, will, it, will it be featured on now 200? That's the question. I don't think so. Uh, I genuinely think we are going to get to now 200. <laughs> God knows what, what's going to happen in the world at that point, but I reckon we'll get there. Uh, right, Khalid and Normani. Normani, love lies. Uh, Lax oomph, bit dull, not too bad. Uh, a bit plodding, maybe. Okay, I really did not like Jax, Jones and Mabel featuring Rich the Kid. It's unlikable, unappealing, it's nasty, ring ring, uh, just don't like it. Okay, next up then, get this one on. Uh, this is Cheat Hoods and Little Mix and Only You. That's alright actually that one, it's quite a party tune, bad vibe, M.O and Lotto Boys with Mr Easy. Uh, and this one then, take it away. Yeah, this is an interesting collab. Cheat codes and little mix, and only you. Right, well, we're almost getting to the end of, uh, well, disc one anyway, of the new stuff. 
Um, and the bridge, actually, no, sorry, one more to go before we get to that, before the bridge. We can see the bridge from here. Uh, In My Blood from Shawn Mendes. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a bridge, I suppose. It's it's kind of a big 80s ballad. Not that different from Total Eclipse of a Heart or something from now one. Uh, so, yeah, one of Shawn Mendes' better ones. In My Blood. Right, now here is the bridge. Let's pay our toll and let's cross. So, this is the first song ever in the history of the Nell series that was purpose built, commissioned to appear on an L. I had a contest, I think it was on the GMB, it says here, Good Morning Britain, presumably pre Piers uh, Morgan. <laughs> I don't know who hosted it at that time. Um, I can't say I watched it. Uh, but yeah, the contest was held uh, to perform one of the songs on Now One. Fittingly enough, uh, it was the very first song on Now One, uh, You Can't Hurry Love. And it's MU4. And it's an incredibly rare song, in fact. It's only available officially via Now 100. I don't know if there was a video or anything done for it. Uh, it was done at Abbey Road Studios. Uh, so, yeah, quite interesting. Uh, I feel I should play it. Uh, let me get lined up. This one's not too bad, actually. It's got a few chipmunk vocals and stuff, but uh, there's not that many of them. Uh, song's all right. So, yeah, let's get a bit of MU4. <laughs> F you too. Uh, and then we'll look at the second half. And uh, I don't really know how I deal with it, really. Because I've already dealt with all these songs. Uh, but I think we can just have a bit of a recap. Uh, have a bit of a trip down memory lane. Even these videos. It feels like a different world ago when I was even talking about Now One. <laughs> it really does. So here we go then. Uh, this is MU4 and their take of, well of course it was a cover in the first place, goes way back to the Supremes, uh, Phil Collins did his version and they've totally reinvented it, I'll give them credit for that. Uh, I don't really like some of the new chords, uh, the, the kind of groove's okay, uh, it's different, it doesn't really sound like uh, a proper song as such, uh, well I won't say it doesn't sound like a proper song, it, it, I don't know, it just doesn't really sound... Uh, Considering it's done at Abbey Road, it sounds a bit kind of home bedroomy. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So it's certainly a milepost in the development of the Now series. Uh, has music really moved on that much since Phil Collins did his version? Well, for the second half of the the album, and I guess this video, uh, we're going to look back then uh, through uh, some of the classics. Look back at the ones they've featured. They feature Red Red Wine by UB40 from Now One. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good one. Uh, still played, still popular, uh, timeless. Again, it was a cover. Rather weirdly, they've picked Against All Odds, uh, another Phil Collins one uh, for Now Three. Uh, what would I have picked from Now Three? Uh, I think in terms of musical impact, I think White Lines by Grandmaster a Mel Mel would have been a really good choice. Uh, maybe a special uh, AKA Free Nelson Mandela uh, in terms of cultural impact, import. Uh, maybe a Bromsky Beat, Small Town Boy would have been an interesting one. Uh, not Gary Glitter, Dance Me Up. Okay, then they leap on to Living on a Prayer from Bon Jovi, now nine, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that stood the test of time. Okay, wet, 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 love is all around. That's a big jump, isn't it? From now 9 to now 28. Really nothing better than this they could have picked. Uh, a bit wedding disco -y. I guess it's still popular. Then they picked two from now 34. Wanna Be and Wonderwall. Uh, both, I guess, big songs. I wouldn't have picked both from now 34. Uh, you could have picked another Oasis one from another now, or another Spice Girls one. I guess Wanna Be. Uh, probably would have been the one to put there. Uh, Robbie Williams, Angels, yep, that's a good one, now 39. Cher, uh, Believe, now 42, uh, I guess. Britney, maybe one more time, yeah, good call, now 44. Uh, for the kids, maybe, S Club 7, Reach, they did have a lot of hits. Uh, Destiny's Child, I suppose, Survivor, Kylie, 
Uh, can't get you out of my head. Now 50, uh, Crimea River. Timberlake, now 55. Was that the summer of 92? Of 02? Oh my gosh. James Blunt, you're beautiful. Uh, and uh, that was now 61. Shakira, Wycliffe. Uh, and that was from now 65, take that, now 68, rule the world, Coldplay, Viva La Vida, now 71, I Kissed a Girl, uh, also now 71, uh, Ed Sheeran, Sing, no I didn't like that, now 88, Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars, Uptown Funk, yeah that was a good one, that was one of the last real modern classics, uh, from now 90, and Bieber, what an anticlimactic ending. Love Yourself with Now 93. I mean, actually, it wasn't a bad song and it had Ed Kieran on it as well, but uh, I wouldn't have ended this volume with that. Anyway, uh, we still managed to make 21 minutes on this video, uh, so not bad. Interesting, interesting. Business as usual next time with Now 101. Uh, we get back to uh, the very ending of... Uh, 2018 I think it was uh, so kissed under well kissed over one year ago yeah one year and a half I'll see you next time with now 101 all right everyone let us know what you think peace